Scene Script Have you ever wondered why some products fail in the market despite all the hype and anticipation? Well, that's a puzzle that market research aims to solve. It's not just about creating a product that you think is fantastic, but about understanding what your potential customers want, what your competitors are doing, and what the market trends are. And how do we get this understanding? Through a process called methodology. Yes, it's a fancy term, but it simply means the techniques we use to gather and analyze data. Think about it like this. You're a detective and you're trying to solve a mystery. Your mystery is, what does the market want? And your clues are all the data you can gather, from customer surveys to social media analysis. But just like a detective, you can't just randomly pick up clues. You need a systematic approach, a methodology, to ensure you're gathering the right data and interpreting it correctly. Now you might be thinking, but I'm not a detective, I'm an entrepreneur. Why do I need to worry about methodology? Well, because it can mean the difference between launching a successful product and seeing it fail. A well-conducted market research using a robust methodology can provide you with valuable insights about your target market, your competition, and industry trends. It can help you identify opportunities and threats and make informed decisions about your product development and marketing strategies. Choosing the right methodology is crucial for obtaining reliable and actionable data. It's like selecting the right tool for a job. If you're trying to drive a nail, you wouldn't use a screwdriver, would you? No, you'd use a hammer. Similarly, different research questions require different methodologies. If you want to know how many people would be interested in your product, you might conduct a survey. If you want to understand why they would be interested, you might conduct in-depth interviews. Choosing the right methodology in market research is like selecting the right tool for the job. It can make all the difference. The first step in choosing the right methodology begins with understanding your research question. Let's pause for a moment to appreciate the weight of that statement. It's not just about having a question, but truly understanding it. This is because your research question, in essence, is the heart of your study. It's the reason why you're embarking on this journey of discovery. It's the riddle that you're trying to solve. So what does it mean to understand your research question? It means being able to clearly define it. It means knowing exactly what you want to find out. It's about being precise, being specific. A vague or broad question is like a foggy road. It's hard to navigate and you're likely to lose your way. But a clear and well-defined question is like a beacon of light, guiding you through the darkest night. But understanding your research question goes even deeper. It's about knowing the nature of your question. Is it exploratory, descriptive, or causal? Let's break that down. An exploratory question is like dipping your toes in the water. You're just trying to get a feel of the situation, to grasp the basic elements. A descriptive question, on the other hand, is like diving into the water. You're immersing yourself, trying to get a detailed picture. And a causal question? That's like examining the currents in the water. You're trying to understand cause and effect, to see why things are the way they are. And why does this matter? Because the nature of your question can influence the choice of your methodology. An exploratory question might require qualitative methods like interviews or focus groups. A descriptive question might need quantitative methods like surveys or observations. And a causal question might call for experimental methods. So as you can see, understanding your research question is not just about knowing what you want to find out. It's about knowing how you're going to find it out. It's about choosing the right tools for the job. And that's why it's the first step in choosing the right methodology. Remember, your research question is the compass that guides your methodology. Once you've established your research question, the next step is to choose an appropriate research design. This choice is critical as it will guide your entire approach to collecting and analyzing data. Let's break down the three main types of research designs, exploratory, descriptive, and experimental. Understanding these will help you make an informed decision about which is best suited for your research question. First, we have exploratory research. This design is ideal when you're diving into a relatively unknown area. It's like being a detective, hunting for clues and insights that might hint at potential trends or opportunities. Exploratory research is flexible and adaptive, allowing you to follow interesting leads as they emerge. 
However, it's important to remember that this design is more about generating ideas and hypotheses, rather than solid conclusions. Next up is descriptive research. As the name suggests, this design is all about describing. It's used when you want to paint a clear picture of a situation, market, or demographic. Descriptive research can provide detailed information about behaviors, attitudes, and characteristics. While it's more structured than exploratory research, it's still primarily observational, meaning you're not manipulating any variables or conditions. Lastly, we have experimental research. This is the big kahuna of research designs, where you manipulate one or more variables to see how it affects other variables. It's the closest we get to a cause-effect relationship in research. Experimental design is often used to test hypotheses and can provide strong evidence for causal relationships. However, it requires careful planning and control to ensure valid and reliable results. The choice of your research design influences the type of data you'll collect and the conclusions you can draw. For instance, exploratory research might lead to qualitative data like open-ended responses, while experimental research often results in quantitative data such as statistics. Remember, your research design should align with your objectives and research question. There's no one-size-fits-all design. It's about choosing the one that will best help you answer your question and achieve your goals. A well-chosen research design is like a blueprint for your market research. It maps out your approach, guiding your steps towards valuable insights and conclusions. With your research design in place, the next step is to select the right sampling method. Now, you might be wondering, why is sampling so crucial in market research? Well, it's simple. Sampling allows us to gain insights about a large population by studying a smaller subset or a sample, saving us time, resources and effort. But it's not just about selecting any random group. The key is to choose a sample that accurately represents the larger population. There are two primary types of sampling methods, probability and non-probability sampling. Each has its own strengths and implications for data reliability and validity, and these must be considered when making your selection. Let's start with probability sampling. This is like a raffle draw where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. This method is prized for its ability to minimize bias and maximize data reliability. There are several types of probability sampling, including simple random sampling, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling, each with its unique approach and usage. On the other hand, we have non-probability sampling. Here, not every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Instead, the researcher uses their judgment to select participants. While this method may be quicker and more cost-effective, it's important to remember that it may increase the risk of bias, which could affect the validity of your results. Non-probability sampling methods include convenience sampling, quota sampling, and purposive sampling. Choosing between these methods isn't about picking the best one. It's about selecting the one that best fits your research objectives, budget, and timeline. For instance, if you need to gather data quickly and cost-effectively, a non-probability method like convenience sampling may be your best bet. But, if you're aiming for a high level of data reliability and are willing to invest more time and resources, a probability method like stratified sampling might be the way to go. Choosing the right sampling method is a critical step in ensuring the accuracy of your market research. Remember, the aim is not just to gather data, but to gather data that accurately represents your market. Finally, once you've collected your data, it's time to process and analyze it. Let's dive into the world of data processing and analysis, a crucial step in market research that can't be overlooked. Data processing is all about cleaning, organizing, and transforming raw data into a format that can be easily understood and analyzed. This could involve removing outliers, handling missing values, or categorizing data. A well-processed data set lays the foundation for effective analysis and interpretation. Now let's talk about data analysis. This is where you apply statistical techniques to your processed data to extract meaningful insights. The type of analysis you'll conduct largely depends on the nature of your research question and the data you've collected. For example, 
If your research question revolves around understanding the relationship between two variables, you might use correlation analysis. If you're interested in identifying differences between groups, you might opt for a t-test or ANOVA. Or, if you want to predict future trends, regression analysis could come to your rescue. Importantly, data analysis is not just about crunching numbers. It's about interpreting the results in the context of your research question and drawing meaningful conclusions. For instance, if your correlation analysis reveals a strong positive relationship between customer satisfaction and repeat purchases, you might conclude that improving customer satisfaction could lead to increased sales. Remember, the ultimate goal of data analysis is to provide actionable insights that can inform your business decisions. It's not enough to simply collect and analyze data. You must also interpret the results and use them to guide your strategic planning. To wrap up, data processing and analysis are crucial components of market research. They allow you to transform raw data into valuable insights, helping you make informed business decisions. So, don't underestimate the power of good data processing and analysis. Remember, the ultimate goal of your market research is to gain insights that can guide your business decisions. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13